hoes off in the mo. Hey, I be ballin' ho. Roosting in my Rory. Uh, Roosting in my Rory. Uh, Roosting in my Rory. Okay. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. I'm your gracious host. My name is Mr. Tariq Elite, also known as Tariq King Flex Nasheed. Glad to have everybody tuning in. I'm broadcasting live from Birmingham, Alabama. I'm down in Alabama right now, just chilling with family, making it do what it do. Today's show is brought to you by Why We Go Broke. That is the CD audio lecture that teaches you how to step your financial game up. Why We Go Broke, available at Amazon.com. And today's show is also brought to you by Hidden Colors. You can get the critically acclaimed documentary Hidden Colors at HiddenColorsFilm.com. And now Hidden Colors is available on iTunes, ladies and gentlemen. You can download Hidden Colors instantly from iTunes right now and you can even rent it you can rent it for like 3-4 bucks off iTunes let me put on some Mac and music so I can really chop up some game there we go let me get some Mac and music on but like I said with Hidden Colors you can now watch it instantly by downloading it or streaming it on iTunes so after you listen to today's show if you have not seen Hidden Colors Go immediately to iTunes and download it and watch it and enjoy it today, especially my overseas cats. There's a lot of people overseas in places where you cannot easily receive mail. A lot of my military brothers out there, a lot of my military brothers can't receive packages um, regularly. So this will be a great opportunity for you to check it out if you're in the military overseas and just all my other cats, if you're in the the heels of the Himalayas like a true player. You can watch Hidden Colors on iTunes. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, the 2012 Summer Mackish Package is available right now. You go to MacLessons.com and click on the button that says get the 2012 Mackish Package. That's only available for one week, ladies and gentlemen, from today, which is August 21st. It will be available to August 28th. That's next Tuesday, 2012. So if you're in the future listening to this, the sale is over. But if you're right now in the present listening to this, you better take advantage of the Mackish Package deal. In the Mackish Package, you will get the Risque Elite Cologne. You will get the Tariq Elite Sunglasses, which right there, that's over 100 bucks. Those two alone. You will also get... Tariq Elite Live in New York, the DVD. Tariq Elite Live in Atlanta, the DVD. Tariq Elite Live in Miami, the DVD. And the Mac Lessons DVD. You get the whole package, all of that, for just 99 bucks for one week only. And I'm telling you, those lecture DVDs, it's packed with game. It's jam-packed with game. It's going to upgrade your game to a whole new level. That's why we call it the Mac is Package. So go to MacLessons.com or MacLessonsRadio.com. On top of the page, there's a button. Click that button and get your package today. We've been sending them out. My staff has been sending them out all morning, so you guys will get them within a few days. But I digress. Let's get into some game, ladies and gentlemen. Today, you know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about dusty niggas. That's the theme of today's show. I want to talk about dusty ass niggas out here in the game because I'm in Birmingham I'm in I'm in the south and you know I, I've always been kind of critical of Birmingham I used to live here as a kid and I've, I've been very critical of Birmingham and then there's some cool folks out here in Birmingham it has changed a lot in, in certain ways but there's still a lot of dusty ass people out here I went to my old neighborhood in West End 
that was my stumping ground in the 80s. And I went to West End, and West End is just, it was just flooded with dusty niggas, just like zombies. The dusty niggas are like zombies. And that's an epidemic we have around the country. There's a dusty nigga epidemic. And not all, see, the thing about dusty niggas, a lot of brothers, we get lumped in with the dusty niggas. The dusty niggas are separate from the every average, every average, everyday brother. The dusty niggas somehow in our society, they've allowed dusty niggas to represent the American black male. Everything that is attributed negatively to the American black man, it's really just a bunch of dusty niggas who people allow to represent the whole community. You you know what I'm saying? So we have to understand and differentiate between regular brothers and dusty niggas. Now, what is a dusty nigga, would you, you might be asking? Well, dusty niggas are niggas who just, you know, life in the system has, has really beat them down and they've accepted defeat. They've accepted a dusty role in life. No goals, no ambitions, and if they have goals and if they have ambitions, it's very low level. Just these old coon-ass niggas, because a lot of them have that coon plantation mentality, crab in the barrel, they want to be dusty, they want to keep everybody else dusty, they have, again, they have very low expectation having niggas. You know, they live for trivial nigga shit. Drinking, smoking, fucking. Just regular, trivial nigga shit. You understand? Their their main concern in life is getting rims for their car. Just nigga shit. Just, they revel and wallow in nigga shit. And the thing is, man, we, uh, we have to differentiate and stay away from dusty niggas. And all my young players, because a lot of my brothers who listen to the show are very young dudes, so they, they need to know what's cool and what's not cool. In our society, the media makes it seem like a dusty nigga is cool. If you're a dusty nigga, this is the image that they have. If you're a dusty nigga, and if you rap or you learn how to play a sport, you can come up. All you have to do is learn a menial talent, and if you're loyal enough, we'll give you a break and you can come up. And that usually doesn't happen, so a lot of these cats stay dusty. And the thing is, man, a lot of these dusty dudes, man, you look at them, because I've seen a lot of these cats out here, especially in the South. There's a different type of dustiness in the South because you have layers and layers and layers of of ignorance being sprayed upon the brothers down here. Not just here either, because the South does get a bad rap as far as racism and all that stuff because people attribute a lot of things to racism, but most of the racism is up in the North, and there are a lot of dusty niggas up there too. But the thing is, Um, A lot of the dusty cats out here, or or just a lot of the dusty cats in general, they just gave up. You know, they don't give a damn. They've accepted their lot in life. They don't want to upgrade. A lot of these dudes are not just weed heads. Because a a lot of these dusty niggas out here are mixing their weed with crack. They're sprinkling crack. They're making primos. So a lot of these niggas are coke heads mixed with weed heads, and that adds to the dustiness. And that's the thing that a lot of us try to ignore. There's a lot of young folks out here that's straight up crack heads, straight up and down. We don't like to admit that, but this is why a lot of them do a lot of dumb, extra, ignorant shit. Like murder people or go rob a family and kill the grandmother and steal a purse. Niggas be trying to get a hit. That's crackhead shit. And a lot of these young dudes, man, are straight up crackheads. A lot of these young dusty niggas, let me differentiate. A lot of these young dusty niggas are straight crackheads with theirs. They're functioning crackheads. You understand what I'm saying? These niggas do crimes to get high. So the thing is, unfortunately, a lot of other inner city kids who want to do the right thing, because there's a lot of cats out there who ain't on that dusty shit. There's a lot of cats out here who do want to do the right thing. They're not dusty. 
you know, they might live in an impoverished neighborhood or they might live in an inner city neighborhood, but they want to do the right thing. You want to get up, you want to get your, you want to work, you want to get a career going on, you want to do something productive. Unfortunately, they're stuck living around dusty niggas and they got to move and shake around these dusty niggas. A lot, of, a lot of times there's dusty nigga peer pressure. Dusty niggas try to get the positive kids to be dusty like them. And if you're the only positive kid on your block and you got 20 dusty niggas trying to coerce you into getting down with them, that pressure is kind of strong sometimes. So the thing is, I say this to my young players out there, don't let these dusty niggas influence you negatively because they ain't going to be shit. If you got something going on, young dudes, and you really want to keep something going on and something popping for yourself, learn how to distance yourself from these dusty niggas. Don't let these niggas suck you into their world. Don't let them make it seem like you ain't down if you ain't dusty like them. Ain't nothing wrong with you wanting to get something going on in your life, getting up out the get up out the hood. There's nothing wrong with that. Dusty niggas will try to make you feel guilty for getting up out the block. Again, these little niggas, they let life defeat them and they don't want to see anybody come up. So anytime, a lot of times you want to do something positive and progressive, these dusty niggas are trying to talk you out of it. These dusty niggas are trying to cast doubt on what you're trying to do. Don't let these niggas do that. Let these dusty niggas lie where they lay. See, the thing is, the dusty nigga phenomenon, the seeds were planted in the 1960s. The seeds were planted for the dusty niggas because the whole dusty nigga phenomenon, it, it, it started around the 80s. It started to, to come into fruition around the 1980s. Because see, in the 1960s, you know, there were dusty niggas. You know, you had some dusty niggas out here, but the, the dusty niggas were at a minimal only a certain type of dude would let himself get dusty because the, the black community wouldn't really fuck with him. The black community wouldn't rock with no dusty nigga. He was ostracized. And women definitely wouldn't get with no dusty nigga. Before the 1960s, before the mid-60s. The thing is, see, sisters, they needed to get with dudes who were providers. That was the main criteria for a dude. Does he have a job? Does he have a career? Can this dude provide for, for the woman if she chose to get down with him? That was the main thing. So a dude, even if he had a menial job, that dude was a come up because he was stability. He had, it showed that this guy could take care of his family. That That's the thing that people took pride in and that's what women look for. After the mid 60s and I've talked about this many many times around 64 when the government started um, um, passing those civil rights bills and they started giving um, sisters all types of benefits and, and like welfare benefits they would make sure that the brothers were not in the home and people don't understand how impactful this was they would literally go into these housing projects that they would allow these sisters to live in and in the 60s they would make sure a dude was not in those homes. They would look for shaving products. They would look for men's clothes. They would go in these houses and or these homes and look in closets and look under beds and they would just go out of their way to make sure no brothers were up in these spots. So the thing is, a progressive brother wouldn't deal with a woman who was in a situation like that because really he couldn't deal with a woman like that because the government wouldn't allow him. So the only types of dudes that would mess with females who were in a situation like that, who were getting any kind of government assistance, were dudes who really didn't have it going on themselves. Dudes who were just kind of in and out. So that's where the dusty niggas stepped in. The dusty niggas found a way to get their foot in the door with women. Because also at this time, women around the mid 60s late 60s if you're getting all of these benefits and these government assistant programs and all this you don't need a dude to quote unquote be a provider anymore so the women the government is the provider so now these women just needed a dude for sexual gratification that's all that was the main criteria so this gave another inroad for the dusty niggas to come up so there's plenty of dusty niggas that can be there for sexual gratification. And this is why a lot of sisters out here lowered their expectations when it came, came to dudes. So I blame sisters for some of this dustiness as well, because 
y'all attract dusty niggas. Y'all give dusty niggas a place to to ferment and grow. Whereas other women from other groups, normally they wouldn't give props to the dusty men in their community. But in our community, in the black community, it's normal for women to allow dusty niggas in their home. It's normal for women to allow themselves to get in relationships and have children by dusty niggas because there is no criteria for them to bring to the table because this, I can do it on my own. I'm independent. I have all of this on my own. All I need is a man for sex. Well, that's what you get with a dusty nigga. You understand? I was looking at that hip hop show, the Atlanta hip hop show, and they had this chick. I I talked about her last time. K. Michelle. K. Michelle was on the show talking about the kind of guy she liked. And she made herself sound like the world's biggest hood rat when she described the dude she liked. And that made her look totally different in the eyes of a lot of people. Because she looks like she has a little sense, but then she described the men she likes. She's like, yeah, I like guys. You know, I like the guys with the gold teeth and the the hot boys and the 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 ballers and the, you know, just she basically described dusty niggas. The guys she liked are dusty niggas, the hot boys, niggas with gold teeth. Un- unfortunately, many of those dudes fit the dusty criteria. And then the same woman was on television talking about how somebody whooped her ass. So she described dusty niggas, then described a nigga whooping her ass. Unfortunately, hot boys and niggas with gold teeth, those are the ass whoopers. So you get what you, you ask for sometimes. But I digress as far as that. But the thing is, again, a lot of these women just look for guys to be be there for sex. And now a lot of these dusty niggas, they had a shot at women. And a lot of men who had it going on, a lot of men who were working hard and being providers, a lot of them were like, well, damn, why am I? I'm working hard and I'm providing and the women ain't really giving me play like that. Women are telling me I'm too nice. Women are telling me I'm too good. And I know many brothers who have heard this from sisters. Brothers hit me up telling me this all the time. Sisters tell them that they're too good. That they're too nice. Them being a provider, them being somewhat intelligent, them having good jobs or good careers. Women tell them, sisters tell them that they're too good for them. I I, I swear I hear this all the time and a lot of brothers out there can attest to this. So the thing is, a lot of guys, if they want to get them a sister and stay down, quote unquote down, they fall into the dusty nigga paradigm. They start taking on those dusty nigga characteristics. Why should I upgrade my game when I don't have to? You know, that's the mentality of a lot of dudes. So we have to look at the dynamic and the historical significance of the dusty niggas now the thing is now what what I'm going to do now I'm going to give a list of five types of dusty niggas now women if you dating a dude like that shame on you and fellas if you carry any of these characteristics it's time for you to upgrade your game you really got to upgrade your game because this dusty nigga, nigga epidemic is just not working. There's too many dusty niggas out here. Niggas ain't doing nothing with themselves. Niggas are running around here hating. Worse than women with their hating. Niggas can't talk. That's another thing. I hate when these dusty niggas try to sound intelligent. They can't talk worth a damn. And I blame their mothers for that. Because a lot of these dusty niggas, let's go back to the 60s. A lot of these dudes in the 19, you know, they were born in the late 60s, early 70s around that time when they started getting the mail out the house. And a lot of these dudes just grew up with their mother and their mother created this hood rat mentality and these hood rats started having kids. So the, the, the hood rats got younger and younger and younger. And when you have kids at a young age, your intelligence level isn't where it should be. So a lot of these young hood rats who have kids, these women, especially down here in the South, And I'm not shitting on everybody in the South, but a lot of these hood rats who are very young, they can't speak worth a damn. And they transfer their their lack of articulation onto their children. Because that's why the first teacher you have is your mother. 
So if you see a nigga who's talking crazy or a young girl who's talking crazy, most likely is her mama talking ignorant as hell. Because you learn to speak from your mother. That's why they call it the mother tongue. Even in the womb, the kids are listening. You can listen to your mother and hear your mother in the womb and learn those voice inflections. So the, the mother has a lot to do with the way you talk. So we got to stop having these ignorant ass mothers out here. I'm not letting y'all off the hook. But anyway, like I said, I want to talk about the five types of dusty niggas that we have out here. Everybody get your pens and get your paper and let's take note. Now, the first type of dusty nigga, dusty nigga number one, you have the dusty aspiring rapper. That's one of the most common dusty niggas, the aspiring rapper. And ain't nothing wrong with being an aspiring rapper because there's some dudes out there with some real talent. But the thing is, for every one dude with with real talent and real drive and real skills to put lyrics together and put songs together and put music together, for every one dude like that, you got... 5,000 dudes who just want to sit up, smoke weed, and do whatever they see in the music video so they can get chicks, and they really don't have any kind of skill. They look at rap as just a lazy hustle, a lazy way to come up, and that's the majority of these dusty niggas out here. Most dusty niggas done got a little rap that they wrote, and they trying to be the next 2 chains or the next little Bootsy or somebody. And they don't have the discipline to be an athlete so they want to be a rapper. So that's the first kind of dusty nigga. All these dusty niggas always got a demo or some shit. They want to rap for somebody. And again, I'm not shitting on all you aspiring rappers, but there's a lot of dusty niggas out there trying to rap. Now, number two, the second type of dusty nigga we have, we have the $300 drug dealer. And I've talked about them a million times on on Ustream and this show. The $300 drug dealer, that's the nigga who got $150 worth of dope. He flipped it one time. Now the nigga think he's Nino Brown. He done made $300. Now he think he's Scarface. He think he's in the game. He think he's a real hustler. As a low-level nigga who stays on the block, nigga been selling dope for 20 years and still living in the damn projects. Because he's making that same $300 over and over again. He makes $300, re-up, trick his little money off, then make another $300, re-up, trick his money off. He's making that same $300 over and over again. He never goes over $300 at a time. These niggas never have more than $300 in their pocket. And they swear that they hustlers. These are the same kind of niggas that make sells $300 worth of dope and they sit up in the house with a security system and an Uzi waiting on somebody to send some goons after them. You know what I'm saying? These niggas who have these delusions of grandeur. Now, number three, the third type of dusty nigga we have, we have the dusty stick-up kid. That's the nigga who robs the dope spots. Now, those dudes are real dusty. There's a movie called Snow in the Bluff. Either Snow in the Bluff, Snow on the Bluff. Y'all can see it on Netflix. It's about this dude from southwest Atlanta. It's an area called the Bluff. I think it's in southwest Atlanta, but it's an area in Atlanta called the Bluff. And this is a, it's like a drama slash pseudo documentary. Kind of scripted. Y'all have to see it. The way it was shot was kind of cool, but it just displays the dusty niggas that we have out here in the streets. That's a great example of dusty nigger tree that we have in the streets. But it's about this dude. He's a stick up kid. He's robbing all the dope spots and all this. But this nigga's still dusty. He's still laying up in the fucking projects. And another thing about these stick up kids and all these rah rah niggas that y'all see in the hood all the time. A lot of these dusty nigger rah rah dudes, stick up kids, niggas always pulling out the gat on folks. Dudes always got the burners. Dudes always got Uzis and all this. And everybody in the hood knows them for being a rah-rah dude. Dudes like that are the main informants in your neighborhood. Do not get it twisted. All those rah-rah stick em up kid type niggas that y'all know about in your hood who go in jail and then get right back out all the time. They never in jail for too long. Those dudes are the main informants in your neighborhood. That's why they can get away with doing all that rah-rah stuff. That's why they can get away with catching bodies all the time and shooting up cats because they cut deals with the with the law enforcement. Don't get it twisted. 
you know, as a matter of fact, there was some uh, an article that came out. I think it was yesterday. There was this dude from the Black Panthers. It was an Asian guy who was a well-respected Black Panther member. And this Asian guy actually provided the Black Panthers with a lot of training and he provided a lot of their guns. He helped the Black Panthers get a lot of the weapons they had. So he was well-respected in the Black Panther movement. They just found out he was an informant. The story came out. This dude was a damn informant. He's supplying the guns, but he's an informant. So y'all have to understand, when y'all see dudes just a little bit too rah-rah, dudes a little bit too gully, running around the hood, it's that little dusty nigga that's shooting up everybody, this dusty nigga that didn't shot up the club, and he's out of jail, he's in and out, in and out, in and out, and he ain't never getting no long sentences. Sentences. That dude is, is an informant. That's why you watch shows like First 48. On shows like First 48, they always have a confidential informant that didn't call up and gave a tip. They never show you who that is. They'll show you other people who's involved with crimes and murder. But if you watch First 48, there's always the narrator will say, well, Officer Gully got a, a tip from an anonymous source. And they never show you who the anonymous source is. See, that anonymous source is the dusty rah-rah nigga in the hood. And the reason why that dusty nigga knows everything about what goes down because he has earned everybody's trust. He earns everybody's trust for being a rah-rah dude. When people see this nigga's crazy, he'll shoot up the block or whatever. They're like, okay, cool. I know that dude, he, he's a down gangster nigga. But that dude is an informant. So don't get that twisted. Now, the next type of dude we have, number four... We have the Dusty Hotep niggas. And y'all know I talk about them all the time. The fake conscious dudes. The dudes who use consciousness to describe to disguise their dusty mix. They use consciousness to dis- disguise all the dusty behavior they exhibit. Now, most of those Dusty Hotep niggas, these are dudes with those fake hustles. They like... They sell incense or bootleg DVDs. These are these dudes who are fresh out of prison. They didn't learn how to use the conscious hustle to make a couple of dollars. And these dudes, they contradict themselves every time they open their mouths. They'll be the first ones running around talking about we need to build a nation, build a nation. But then they'll spend every dollar they have in a strip joint. Every time they get a buck, they're in a damn strip club. They running around talking about your body is a temple of Allah. But these dudes are undercover crackheads. There's a lot of these so-called conscious hotep niggas that are straight crackheads on the low. So these dudes are always contradicting themselves. They use consciousness to disguise how dusty they are. They always running around talking about the people should give out the knowledge for free. A lot of these dusty conscious niggas say that about me about hidden colors oh man hidden colors man Tariq should be giving that away for free and them same dusty niggas will have bootleg copies selling them these same dusty niggas who talk about the knowledge should be free they be walking around with a bunch of bootleg DVDs selling them you understand what I'm saying so don't be fooled by these dusty niggas who are talking about hotep this, hotep that. Another thing about the, the fake hotep dusty niggas, they, their teeth are always messed up. That's another thing. You can tell a fake dusty hotep nigga by their teeth. They teeth be hit. Niggas' teeth look like they got 32 sticks of butter in their mouth. It's always a raggedy mouth nigga talking about hotep this, hotep that. You dig? So do not be fooled by that. Now, last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, number five, the fifth type of dusty nigga that we have running around here. We have the community baby daddy. The community baby daddy, the the community baby daddy, this is the dusty nigga that has nothing going on. So he tries to knock up as many hood rats as he can. And he just simply lives off the rats. He lives off the hood rats. He knocks up because he knows that they can get on the county. They can get food stamps or they can get section eight. So he just knocks up as many as he can and he lives off them. See, dusty niggas like that, they're not worried about child support because they don't have no money. They know they ain't got no money. And they ain't going to get no money anytime soon. So it's like a win-win situation for them. 
So knocking up a chick, that's a come up. They don't worry about no damn child support. They like, well, I ain't never going to have no money. So they knock up all these little dusty hood rats and keep the dusty cycle going on. So that's what we have. So if you are a dude who exhibit this behavior, you need to step your game up. And if you're a female who rock with niggas like that, you better step your game up. Because again, when they start shutting down some of these dusty nigga and hood rat enabling programs, y'all gonna be ass out. And the reason why they enable these programs now is really to control the community. The lowest level of the black community is controlled by a lot of these programs. And plus they know that dusty niggas and hood rats create and fuel the prison system. They know that the offspring is going to create a whole new financial opportunity with new prisoners. But that's another deep story within itself. And y'all need to check out Hidden Colors 2 because we go into that in Hidden Colors 2. Ladies and gentlemen, that's been today's episode of the Mac Lessons Radio Show. I'm so glad everybody tuned in. Remember, the first week of September, I'm going to do the Tariq Elite um, radio show. Y'all can hear it live on Ustream. I'm going to do it for a week. It's going to be like a morning, afternoon show. Um, One week, every morning, West Coast time, 10 in the morning to noon, 12 noon. Uh, East Coast time, that's going to be like 1 in the afternoon. Yeah, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So I keep you guys posted on that. That's going to be the first week of September. I'm going to be playing music. People can call in live with all your questions. It's going to be a fun thing that I'm doing just for a week. All my cats, if you want to um, um, advertise some of your stuff on that show, hit me up at info at kingflexentertainment.com and we can work out something and y'all stay tuned for that. But don't forget, you get Hidden Colors at iTunes right now. Go to iTunes or you can just still get the DVD at hiddencolorsfilm.com. I'm a holla. Peace. A holla. Peace. A holla, peace. A holla, peace.